Not a fan of the banks. They trample on the middle class. They control Washington. And why do they chain all their pens to the desks? Who's trying to steal a pen from a bank? Makes no sense. That's why you gotta break up the banks into little pieces and then flush the pieces down the toilet so you can never put the banks back together. Then you just make the bankers pay for college for everyone. And America's fixed. Hey! <laughs> the time has come to end the foolishness. Let's stop allowing ourselves to be led down a path fraught with danger and deceit. No longer look at the rumpled and crumpled figure of Bernie Sanders as your next possible POTUS. Instead, look to the professionally rumpled and crumpled figure of Larry David as the Democratic candidate. After all, who can it hurt? This and more as we tack around the dial and welcome back the afternoon drive time talker at WPHT Talk Radio 1210 in Philadelphia. It's got to be a dilemma whether they hate the Mets or the Cubs right now more than the other. Rich Zioli is in the house. All right, Rich, I'll, I'll leave that for just the moment there on the baseball side. But come on, man, let's get to it. Larry David for president right now. Let's draft it. He's a hell of a lot funnier than Bernie Sanders. Oh, he nailed it. This was the role he was born to play at. But let's face it here. This is all a campaign to make Bernie Sanders very likable, very human, because, you know, socialism is mainstream now. Have you heard? Ah, I had not heard that. Please, what is this socialism you speak of here? Because most people would not have an idea what it is. Well, that's the thing. What is it exactly? Bernie describes himself as a democratic socialist. I have no idea what that means. And I don't care if you call him an ice cream and pony socialist. Socialism is socialism. And we used to frown on that sort of thing in this country. And it's kind of scary to me now that socialism has gone so mainstream in the Democratic Party that he's welcomed on the stage. He's dancing with Ellen. And now we're, we're joking about him on Saturday Night Live. But those jokes are really designed so that people are more endeared to Bernie Sanders, not to blast him into oblivion in any way. What do the people in Philadelphia and in your audience think about Bernie Sanders? Is there any sort of a, a big groundswell for him? Well, I, I think people are afraid of Bernie Sanders, and they should be, because Bernie Sanders, his economic policies would truly bankrupt this country. But I think now more people in this audience are listening for signs that Joe Biden's going to be running for president. They do think Bernie Sanders can win the nomination. I mean, look, and as we all know, I mean, Obama came and stole it from Hillary Clinton in 2008. I say stole it because, you know, it was supposed to be hers. It was, she was the heir apparent. And now she's the heir apparent again. And Bernie could theoretically steal it out from under her again. The Democratic Party is not going to let that happen. The establishment, uh, they're in bed with Wall Street just as much as any other party is. So they're going to make sure that someone who's Wall Street friendly becomes their nominee. And if they believe Hillary's going down, they're certainly not going to stand by and let Bernie Sanders get the nomination. So enter Uncle Joe to save the day. How dare you say the Democrats are in bed with the people in Wall Street? How dare you, Rich Cioli? My God, they'll be coming out of the woodwork on that one. All right, 60 seconds left. Here you go. You mentioned Uncle Joe. Here's Congressman Brendan Boyle on Twitter saying, I have a very good source, good source, close to Joe, that tells me VP Biden will run for prez. What's your take? My take is why not? You know, if you're Joe Biden, what do you have to lose at this point? Look, best case scenario for Joe Biden is that Hillary winds up getting indicted or just becomes so unpopular, so unelectable that she winds up getting, you know, her health becomes an issue, quote unquote health, you know. Uh, worst case scenario is he loses, but his name's still out there. He's, he's what else is he going to do? I mean, he's vice president. How many funerals can you go to during a week? Run for president on the taxpayer's dime? Look, I'm not a fan of Joe Biden by any stretch of the imagination, but from his perspective, Ed, what else does he have to do all day? Uh, 30 seconds to you, Hillary Clinton, this weekend, uh, deep in the South, and some people say that she was putting on a fake Southern accent. Come on, this is getting a little ridiculous now. You have a little fun on the campaign yeah. trail, right? You all come back now, you hear? I mean, it's <laughs> Problem, right? If she's going to use a southern accent, you were in Arkansas for years. Can't you at least do a good southern accent? Come on, Ed. Very well put, Rich. I had not thought of that. She hasn't exactly got it because, you know, if you're going to do the southern accent, son, you just got to try and hit it right. That was awful. Let's we're, oh, trust me. We're never going to do that again. Not on any form of media ever, because now I'll get hammered. Look, Berliner's running. Now he wants to be southern. <laughs> We're all out of trouble, and the people in Philly yeah. won't like it either. There you go. Rich Zioli, Afternoon Drive, WPHT Talk Radio 1210 in Philadelphia. Rich, always a pleasure, my friend. Talk to you soon. Well, Donald Trump wants to put your tax dollars to work in a very specific manner. After all, you need to keep that perfect hair in perfect place. It's coming up right here on The Hardline.